About a year ago, I created a video on the changes to the principled BSDF in Blender 4.0. One significant update was how Cycles handled the intensity of glossy reflections. In that video, I provided a detailed technical explanation of the updated specular functionality, including how the index of refraction controlled the Fresnel curve. However, over time I've received feedback that it's too technical for some viewers. So in this video, I'll give a simpler explanation and easy to understand examples of the IOR level functionality. So just a little bit of technical explanation. Cycles handles reflections in several ways. One type is diffuse reflections, which you see on surfaces like concrete, rough wood, rocks, and brick walls. These surfaces can also have a bit of glossiness, often referred to as specularity or specular reflections. This is the typical focused specular highlight of a light source on a surface. However, the surface isn't just reflecting the light source, it's reflecting the entire environment. This secondary reflection, often called specularity, is like a glossy layer on top of a diffuse surface, or in some materials, with no diffuse component at all, like a black plastic. The degree or strength of the glossy reflection layer is determined by the Fresnel curve, which in turn is controlled by the index of refraction. While we won't dive deep into that, Blender 4.0 introduced a more technically accurate way of controlling this reflection strength by allowing for the direct use of index of refraction values. This was great for those users who understood how to do this. However, for backward compatibility and ease of use purposes, Blender 4.0 introduced this IOR level parameter. It's a modifier of the index of refraction and allows for easy artistic changes to increase or decrease the strength of the specular reflection layer. There's no need to understand how to use specific IOR values when using it. What it does is to internally modify the IOR, which in turn drives how the Fresnel curve expresses reflections across the surface. It can also disable the specular reflection layer entirely if you want a purely diffuse surface by setting the value to zero. By using the IOR value to control reflection intensity, you're abstracted from needing to understand the index of refraction, the Fresnel curve, and how those two parameters interrelate. All you need to roughly understand is that the IOR level parameter will increase or decrease reflections on a surface in a general way. If you want a more comprehensive and technically accurate understanding, watch my original video for the IOR level parameter. So let's look at this material tester right here. Once you see how easy this is, it'll totally make sense. We have, for this material tester, no diffuse component. It's black, so all the reflections that we see are handled down here through the specular channel layer. But primarily, we have the IOR level, which is at the default value of 0.5. It's the neutral value, meaning the index of refraction alone governs the degree of reflectivity with no influence from the IOR level parameter. But interestingly, we have the index of refraction up here at 1.5. That's a very, very common value, and the way that these values are configured in Blender are essentially the most common values that you're going to find in 3D applications, and that value of 1.5 has been chosen because it will simulate a broad range of glossy materials in that default value. However, one of the real challenges, especially if you're new to 3D in general, is to look at parameters in a 3D application and really have any idea about what the ranges are and what those ranges do. In Blender, typically we have ranges that go from 0 to 1, but the index of refraction up here actually can go from 1.1 all the way up to 70, but the most common range values that you're going to use are between 1.2 and 2.0 increasing or decreasing between those ranges increases or decreases the reflectivity across the general broad range of the surface as you're looking straight onto it. We're not even going to touch the IOR values. You could completely forget all of that and come down to IOR level and control the strength either increasing or decreasing of the reflectivity broadly across this surface by increasing 
this value towards one or decreasing this value towards zero to get that kind of an effect. And so that's what the IOR level does, is it changes the intensity of glossy reflections of what we call low incidence parts of a model. So let's take a look at one scenario here with this material tester, where you could really use that IOR level to adjust the intensity of the reflections. A very common thing to do in 3D renderings, especially say for interiors, is to adjust the exposure of the scene. In this example, my exposure is at the default value of 1.0, but let's say that we had the exposure turned up to a value of 3. That may be something you need for, say, an interior scene, but look at what it does to the intensity of the reflections. We actually may want to come in and adjust that, so with the material testers selected, we could come down to the IOR level and adjust that down in order to compensate for the elevated exposure level. So this is just one potential scenario for using the IOR level. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. So we can see in these abstract models that they've got the different colorations which are being handled by the base color, which is the diffuse color that I mentioned. And then we've got the glossiness sitting on top of it, reflecting the primary light sources, which we see as specular highlights. It's also reflecting the rest of the scene, but this is primarily what we're seeing as sort of a reflection feature. And let's say that we want that to be not quite as strong. This is where we would come down to the IOR level, and we want to cut that reflection strength in half, so we would take it to a value of 0.25. And there you can see, as I do this for each of the three products, that that reflection strength is more subtle. That, in essence, is what the IOR level parameter does. But let's take a look at this in a more sophisticated scene to see its artistic uses. When we take a look at this rendering, we can see that we've got a variety of materials here. If we come back to these cutting boards, these are diffuse only materials. So those don't factor into what we're doing. And then we've got glass here. Glass objects are unaffected by the IOR level, so keep that in the back of your mind. We've also got metals. Metals are unaffected by the IOR level, so also keep that in the back of your mind. But we've got this black plastic here, we've got the black plastic in the handle at the top, and right here at the top of the teapot. The teapot itself has this red material that has a diffuse red color, and sitting on top of that are the glossy reflections. Well, as I look at this, I think, you know, the glossy reflections seem a little bit strong, but at the same time, the black plastic, I'd like their reflections to be just a little bit punchier, a little bit stronger. So I would select the teapot, and then we would come over to the material editor, and we would come down to IOR level, and I want to decrease those strong reflections, so I would just take this down to, I'm, I'm going to do 0.3, and then when we select this black plastic material, let's increase its intensity just a little bit. So let's take it up to 0.65, and that'll punch it up just a little bit. And when we do that, we end up getting this. So you could see that we drop the intensity of those glossy reflections, and we've increased the intensity of the reflections on this black plastic just a little bit. The important thing to note is that it's primarily reducing or increasing the reflections in what we call these face-on areas. Glancing areas are basically unadjusted by the IOR level function. And I explain that in much greater depth in my original video where I go over a lot of those detailed nuances. But let's take a look at one more example. In this part of the scene, We've got the black plastic that makes up the handle components and the spatula entirely. As I look at it, they're using default values, IOR of 1.5, IOR level of 0.5, but it's still a little bit dark within this scene. Let's take this value up to 0.75. When we do that, we end up getting this. Now, it was subtle, but just that small amount of subtlety brought up the intensity of the reflections enough for the surface curvature to be subtly visible and to see those reflections appear just enough to make a difference. So anyway, that's all I would want to show you in this video. If you want more technical detail, you can go watch my other video.